Good morning, my friends. I don't know what it is. I can't seem to keep my bedroom and bathroom tidy for the life of me. I keep all the common areas nice and clean, but these spaces just seem to be the catch-all for everything. So today, before I get ready, I'm just going to clean up a little bit, put my contacts in so I can actually see what I'm doing, and then get this day started with little Parker. You guys know that I like to wash my face first thing in the morning. I'm using Tubes & Co. Organic company, all natural, small homestead family, um, amazing products. If you guys have never checked out Tubes & Co., please check out the link in the video description. I'll have it there for you with a discount code for free shipping, but this oil cleanser has become my absolute favorite. And then after I clean my face, I love my Kapari coconut rose toner. I've shared this with you guys before. It just feels so fresh. And then I mix my frankincense face balm with my Tubes & Co Glow Serum. That's it, that's all I do for my skincare. And it's all natural, it feels good. I can feel good about putting it on my skin and not have to worry about chemicals and things that are gonna harm me later on. I've also recently done a little research on CBD oil and for about three to four months now I've been taking a dropper full every morning. I got some new brushes y'all okay isn't it exciting when we get new brushes like the old ones get dingy I'm really bad about cleaning them and so every so often I just throw the old ones out and I get new ones and it's actually better for your face you don't want to use dirty brushes on your face it's really gross <laughs> and this is my favorite brow kit from Revlon I've been using this for years just a soft brown color that I use to darken my eyebrows I was all out of one of my favorite eyeshadows from Urban Decay. It's called Virgin, and it's what I use as my eyebrow bone highlighter. Today, I'm just keeping it super comfy, sweats and my Uggs. It is super cold outside right now here in Virginia. Hey you guys, good morning. Welcome back to another vlog on the channel. Ooh, today's Monday, it's the start of another week. I thought I would take you guys along with Parker and I today. My goals for today are three things. I need to get school done with Parker, and you guys know today's Monday, so we're doing science and history. I'm really excited because we officially start our amphibian science unit today. We just finished the bird week last week, so Parker's really excited too um, to get to start that new unit. And then in addition to that, we're going to do history. We're doing U.S. Constitution with the Good and the Beautiful. And I need to get my seedlings. 
Hey Ollie, I need to get my seedlings transplanted into bigger pots. They are at the stage where they are, um, there's too many that have sprouted in the little trays that we have back here that we started for the balcony garden. They're doing well, but they need more room to grow and for their roots to grow. But it's been super cold in Virginia. We had like a major cold front come through um, and it was like actually 20 something degrees yesterday. So I had to bring all the seedlings inside put them in the kitchen where they're warm so they don't die off and then I brought my tomatoes inside as well and those are bigger planter boxes so I had no room here in the living room so I put them in my bedroom and let me show you guys what happened you guys know I love cats but let me tell you mm -mm. yep that is what the cat did look at that completely ate my tomato plants so I think some of them are salvageable like this one here it'll be all right I mean I've had hornworms that ate my bushes worse than this and they've actually survived so I think some of these will be okay this guy here I don't know like most of his foliage is gone so I don't know we'll see what happens but yeah so my goal today is to get the seedlings transplanted into bigger pots and then also kind of clean up my tomatoes and see what I can salvage out of them, give them some water, and then put everything back out on the balcony today. It's going to warm up to about 60, but not until this afternoon. So I won't be putting them out this morning because it's still a little chilly and I see frost on the car, so I don't want to put them out there right now. But that's what I'm going to do. And then the last thing I need to get done today is I've decided that I need to clean out my closet even a little bit more than I already did. You guys know when we moved to the apartment, we downsized a lot. I threw away a lot of clothes and shoes and things that I'm not gonna need in Alaska. I'm gonna go through that closet today, pick out what I don't wanna take to Alaska, what I don't need, and we're gonna donate that. So that's the plan for today. Thought I would take you guys along. Do you need to go potty? Do you wanna go outside? Huh? Yes, you wanna go potty? I don't know exactly when this got started, but some point along the line, Parker and I created this thing we call Alien Brains. And for a little boy, this is so fun for him. He'll have me scramble eggs with sliced up hot dogs, put a couple drops of food coloring in there to make them green, and of course, squirt on some blood. One order of Alien Brains coming right up. I'm just gonna have an everything bagel this morning with cream cheese and some water and maybe slice up some apples for Parker and I to share. Just keeping it super simple this morning. Um, is that Galanthians? Uh, Galatians. Galatians. <laughs> Galanthians, huh? I like that. And just a little side note, I think it's kind of funny. Um, people, <laughs> some people, automatically assume because we are a homesteading channel we have a garden, we raise our own meat, you guys know all the things, um, that we only eat the stuff that we create on our own homestead. Like I've had people that have seen me use cream cheese from the grocery store on my bagel and they're like, oh my gosh, I know how to make cream cheese. 
<laughs> in fact, I make amazing cream cheese uh, when we have dairy from either our cow or our sheep. But the reality is, you guys, I don't always have time for that. So yeah, we eat some cream cheese from the grocery store. I did a day in the life video not too long ago and I was making oatmeal for Parker and I and I ran out of milk and I had a carton of almond milk in the back of the fridge, like silk almond milk. And I'm like, oh, I'll just use that. Somebody left me the worst comment and was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you use silk. That's so processed and bad for you. It's disgusting and I'm never gonna watch your channel again. And I was like, it must really suck to be that wound up. Like, it's really not that serious. None of us are completely self-sufficient. Like, uh, what exactly is in your shampoo? What's, what's the ingredients in your toothpaste? I mean, nobody is like 100% organic and grows and makes everything that they use. So it's just a ridiculous thought. But I just kind of chuckle when I get the comments and I don't even reply to them anymore. I just delete them, but it's like, yeah. Uh, we used cream cheese from the grocery store. I used food coloring for Parker's alien brains and we used hot dogs and ketchup from the store. <gasps> yeah, that's ugly. <laughs> All right, the scoop on skin. Psalm 91.4 says, He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you can hide. His truth will be, shield, will be your shield and protection. There's a lot more to your skin than meets the eye. First of all, your skin is actually an organ, just like your heart, your lungs, and kidney. Did you know that, P? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought it was just normal skin. Nope. In fact, it's the largest organ of your entire body. That's why it's so important that we take care of our skin. We just got to where God created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. So yeah. he created the universe and then he created Adam and Eve, right? So mm -hmm. now we're gonna but talk about the fall. Why do you have to make, um, why he have to make black holes? That those could suck up the earth if they get close to the earth. <laughs> well, Parker, there's a lot of questions we can ask God when we get to heaven, right? Like, I want to know why we need spiders. Like, I really think we could make it without them. So that's a question. I have lots of questions. I have a whole list of questions I'm going to ask God when I get to heaven. Because sometimes we just can't make sense of it, right? So it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say, this is Satan talking to Eve, tempting her in the garden. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? All right, so Psalm 115.4. Their idols. Their idols are silver and gold. The work. The work of men's hands. Good. 2 Corinthians 8.21, providing for, for honest things, things not only in the sight of the Lord, but in the sight of the men. In the sight of men. Good. What does that mean? Providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but in the sight of men. What do you think that means? So it basically means that you should do what's right and have integrity and be honest all the time, right? Not just like... If you were in the sight of the Lord. Well, yeah, that's integrity, right? Integrity is doing what's right even when nobody's watching you, right? Colossians 3.23, and whatsoever. Whatsoever ye do, do it honestly as unto the Lord, but not unto men. All right, before we start our science lesson, I think I'm gonna do a second cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> I don't always do that, but today's just, you know, just one of those days. It's like super cold outside and I'm kind of feeling it. So I usually only have like two, maybe three cups of coffee a day. I always have one in the morning when I wake up and do my quiet time. I usually have one in the afternoon after school's over. And then sometimes Joe and I will have a a cup in the evening. Um, it's like a dessert to me. I really love it. So I'm going to go ahead and fix a cup of coffee and then we're going to jump into this science lesson. So for my coffee, I usually put stevia as a sweetener in there and I do half and half or cream. And I've learned that I've had to measure out my cream, you guys, because it's one of those things that I can totally go crazy on. <laughs> 
So normally I also put vanilla in my coffee. I put like two teaspoons of my homemade vanilla. As you can see, totally unacceptable. I am completely out. So I think um, I'm actually gonna take you guys along. I did purchase some more vanilla beans. These are super inexpensive on Amazon. Uh, these are Madagascar vanilla beans and I get these and I do um, a bunch of my own homemade vanilla extract but I am out of vodka. So I've got to go to the liquor store this week and buy some vodka and then I'm going to come and make probably like two quarts of homemade vanilla extract um, for cooking, baking, and mainly for my coffee. So today sadly I'm not going to have any vanilla. We are ready to go. So usually I have Parker's lessons already, like I'll look, I'll look at the lesson and see what I need to get out it's for science because a lot of times we do little projects and things so I need to actually get stuff. So like today we are using a flashlight, some tape. Where's the thermometer? We just had it. Parker. Okay. You're such a jokester mm -hmm. and a thermometer, which we have handy. So not really sure what we're going to be using these for because I actually didn't even look at the lesson. We just got this in last week and I haven't even had a chance to bind it. Uh, but we're going to just jump right into it and uh, roll with it, right? And fly by the seat of our pants. A hiker discovers a brilliant blue poison dart frog clinging to a tree trunk. Carefully climbing down to the river's edge. Mmm. Octotherm. An animal that depends on external sources for its body heat. All right, so we are loving the U.S. Constitution course from the good and the beautiful. I've told you guys this so many times. Um, I'm sorry, I've got the washer and the dryer going in the background. I hope that you can't hear that. <laughs> I'll try to edit it out the best I can, but this Constitution course, you guys, has been phenomenal. I am learning so much stuff that I forgot from when I was a kid, and I think it's really good for Parker to learn these things. So today, or last lesson, we learned about the articles of the Constitution, and we went over them, and so today we're kind of doing a review of that um, in depth as far as like what those articles contain. So today we're breaking down Article 1, Sections 4 through 6. No, we're not, I lie. Today we're doing Article 1, Sections 1 through 3 um, because the different articles have different sections in there. <laughs> I learned that. So that's what we're gonna do today. So the President of the United States, as the head of the executive branch, swears an oath to faithfully execute the presidential responsibilities and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So let's go ahead and glue that one on the executive branch. We the people of the United States and order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic domestic, domestic tran tranquility, 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 provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves, and our posterity, posterity, and do ordain, 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 and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Good job. Very good. That's the preamble. Okay.
Okay, you guys, we just finished school, and now I'm just, I changed my clothes. I'm just gonna do something with this, a little something, something. I've talked to you guys about this before on my channel. I'm really big on doing what I feel is kind of taking care of myself, <clears throat> keeping myself presentable. I do not like Joe to come home from work and me to be slouching around in my sweatpants with no bra on, teeth unbrushed, like, that's just not who I am. And we've been married now almost 23 years. So that's not to say that I don't have days where um, I'm super busy or maybe I'm just lazy. Like Joe has definitely seen me at my best and he's seen me at my worst, right? It's all, it's that unconditional love, but I just gotta get myself going for the day. Sometimes I do this first thing in the morning. Sometimes I do this after school. It just depends on how the, the flow of the day is going. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with this. I washed my hair yesterday and I actually prefer my hair dirty because when it's not freshly cleaned, it is easier to style and manage. When it's clean, it's very soft and very frizzy, um, and I have all these wispies and craziness going on, so I don't really know what I'm gonna do in this today. I might just put it up in a tight bun or something because I'm gonna go uh, pot these plants and go through my closet here in a few minutes with you guys and get rid of some things. So it's like, I'm not gonna curl my hair, I'm not going anywhere, that just would be a waste of my time. But I'm gonna do a little something something with this. Listening to one of my favorite podcasts while I get ready, that's what I do when I'm in the shower, when I'm driving, when I'm getting ready. Uh, listen to my favorite podcast. I like Joe Winger, Old Fashioned On Purpose. I absolutely love Off the Bench with Heidi St. John. Uh, Homemaker Chic, Farmhouse on Boone. A really good Christian podcast is Real Christianity with Dale Partridge. He is phenomenal. Uh, Dorinda Wilson's podcast, I love her too. She's like a 30-something year homeschool veteran mom. Very inspiring and encouraging. So, you know, the Lord says to renew our minds, and I think we've got so much negativity coming in all day, right? From social media, from the news, from everything. Like I like to read my Bible. I like to have positive, encouraging podcasts. I like to be streaming all of these good things into my ears to combat the bad. So this is my average everyday makeup routine. Nothing extravagant. I use concealer and then I put on a bronzer over that. This is Tubes & Co bronzer, love it. And then some cheek color, of course, to highlight those cheeks. After that, I do darken my eyebrows. I feel like eyebrows that are not colored in a little bit, it's kind of like a picture without a frame. So I've gone a lot softer now than I used to. Now I'm gonna be applying some eyeshadow. Love Tubes & Co eyeshadow, you guys. It is so vibrant and long lasting. I am gonna use a little bit of my new eyebrow bone highlighter that I got today though from Urban Decay. And I like to put a little eyeshadow on the underneath of my eyes as well. Give it a little shimmer. Gonna put on some mascara and highlighter on some of those um, bone areas in your face. And then a little bit of lip gloss from Tubes & Co. Lastly, I spray with a finishing spray, and that is pretty much it. Now, on to the hair. I have had so many of you lovely ladies that have asked me how do I do my messy bun, or AKA as Parker calls it, my bird's nest. I just flip it upside down as you saw, pull it through the rubber band once, and then the second time I don't pull it all the way through. All of these little things that hang out here that didn't get pulled through, I just gather them and tuck them up underneath the rubber band and that way you won't be able to see them. It's just a poofy, um, messy bun and it's one of my everyday go-to looks because it's easy. I think it's semi-cute. Just play with it until you get it right and that's all there is to it. Nothing special. All right, so welcome to my closet, AKA the only storage that we have in this apartment. So it may look very full and that's because it is, like it's stacked from the floor to the ceiling because we have no storage in this apartment. Basically most of the sweaters I'm gonna be keeping because of Alaska. I did have somebody ask me if I started buying clothes for Alaska and the answer to that is yes. And you know what? I actually do a lot of my shopping at the Goodwill. 
one man's trash is another man's treasure. And there are so many good clothes that you can find at the Goodwill. Some of them are even name brand and they've hardly been worn. So a lot of these sweaters, like this one here, for example, I got from the Goodwill. And this is Old Navy. So it's a really thick, thick, durable, warm sweater that I got from the Goodwill for Alaska. So like this is something I'm definitely gonna keep. See, like these jeans I got at the Goodwill. And I am all about some faded, holy, stretchy jeans. Like the, <laughs> these are the kind of jeans you need when you got a big badonka donk. So these jeans are awesome and I probably paid like three or four dollars at the Goodwill for these. Oh my gosh, you guys, do you know what this is? This is my wedding dress. Okay, I have not even, have I not looked at it? I don't think I've even looked at my wedding dress since I put it away after we got married. Do you guys wanna see it? All right, let me take it out and show you. I'm gonna tell you the little story behind the wedding dress. Okay, so you guys know when Joe and I got married, we were in high school, I was 17, he was I think 19 when we got married. So to say we didn't have any money is an understatement. We did not have any money. His mom, who has since passed, um, rest her soul, she planned our entire wedding, ordered the little cake, and it was nothing extravagant, you guys, but it was so perfect and special to me. And we had music and dancing and she catered in food and it was, so perfect at 17 years old, I couldn't have asked for anything more beautiful, especially with the kind of budget that we were working with. So being that we didn't have any money, I surely didn't have money for a wedding dress. We had a really good friend of ours that actually did my hair. She used to be a hairstylist. She did this beautiful updo with all these curls and my mom helped me make my wedding dress. So uh, I'm actually kind of nervous to open this up. Oh my gosh, because at 17 years old, obviously my taste back then was not what my taste is now. And let me tell you guys, this wedding dress is not your typical extravagant wedding dress. We just didn't have the money for that. My mom and I went to Walmart, went to the fabric section, spent like $90 on fabric and little pearls and all the things that we did to the dress and that was it. We went home, we made the dress, I got some cute little shoes to go with it and some cute stockings and that was my wedding dress. So let me open it up and show you guys. Oh, I forgot about that. All right. This is one of my Mary Kay seminar gowns. I told you guys I used to do Mary Kay. We would fly down to Dallas, Texas once a year for these huge seminars where we got recognized and got awards and everything. Look at that. Who has that small of a waist anymore? Not this girl. You have to be like, you have to be like this. You gotta undo it all. Undo it all. Nope, it still wouldn't fit me. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so tiny. I forgot all about this. And I don't remember, this was not from my wedding night. This is beautiful. You know how you wear something sexy and fancy on your wedding night? My mom actually helped me pick out that outfit. I don't even think I still have that outfit, uh, but this was something that I bought for one of our anniversaries along the years to wear for Joe um, for our sexy time. So look how pretty that is, oh my goodness. So my thought for a wedding dress was Renaissance theme. I don't know why. I thought I was a princess, I guess. And I guess that day I was a princess. Like this, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what that is. It's like fake flowers and stuff, but anyway, it came across my waist in a V shape and it was really pretty. And then the sides, of course, lace up here and you cinch them down and tie it. Same thing on this side here. And then it had the lacy sleeves that kind of bowed out over the wrist. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
with the pretty little v-neck and the back had this beautiful lace that kind of came over the hips and the sides like Renaissance dresses do and then it just zipped up right here. Um, there is absolutely no way I would, I would fit into this now. Um, should I try it? <laughs> this could be really sweet or this could be really bad, but you know what? Let's give it a shot. Here we go, you guys. So I'm having to suck it in just a little bit, you know, like maybe if I had some Spanx or something, but like these childbearing hips are way bigger than when I had the babies before I had the babies, you know what I'm saying? These don't cinch down near as small as they used to. And then these things, wow, they grew. They are much bigger than uh, when I first met Joe. But if it's, look at this, it's all creased and dented from being packaged up for 22 and a half years. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Parker helped me cinch it and zip up the back. I couldn't believe I could actually zip it up in the back. I thought, you know, everything grows when you get older. Even my arms are bigger. My legs are bigger. Everything is bigger, but oh my goodness. It's just so funny, you guys. Like, people go out and spend $25,000 on, like, wedding dresses and stuff like what this I know it's not the most beautiful dress right but to me it's amazing and it was when I was 17 I felt like a princess and then you know this thing obviously came over my head something like that and it came down the aisle dun, 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 dun. um so yeah anyway how fun this was my wedding dress and I kind of had a similar do for my wedding not like this but it was an updo with like all kinds of curls and then they stuck little pearls in all my curls and it was so pretty just adorable I was teasing Lexi and I said are you gonna wear my wedding dress for your wedding when you get married and she just looked at me and she was like uh no <laughs> let me know what you guys think in the comments of my homemade wedding dress that my mom helped me with. How fun. I'm gonna have to take a picture of this and send it to Joe at work right now. He's gonna be like, get a life. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm Sammy and Parker playing dress up, Pompey. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and then guess what else I found? You guys, I, for 22 years, thought I lost these. I have not seen these in so long. This is my garter and I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this little angel pen was my, was my something old, you know, something, what is it? Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Is that right? I don't know. I think my aunt gave this to me and it's been in my, been on my garter ever since. This is stretched out, y'all, okay? The elastic's broken. This is not how big my thigh was back then. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is hilarious. I thought we lost this. And then my ring pillow. Look at my ring pillow. Oh, is that where the ring was? Yeah, this is where the ring boy puts, you put the rings on the pillow and the ring bearer walks down the aisle and presents the rings to the preacher. Look how yellow it is. I don't know if you guys can see that. The lighting is so bad. It's so old and dingy. But I was like, oh my gosh, I thought I lost these and they've just been wrapped up in my wedding dress this whole time. How fun. This takes me back to a place in my life where I was young and in love and Joe was my knight in shining armor. So maybe that's where the Renaissance thing came from. I don't know. Now I do things a little differently for my garden. I mean, everybody does everything differently, right? This is just the way that I do things. So when you're starting your garden from seeds, they need to be protected. They're very fragile. And this is the way that I have found it to work best for me. I start all my seeds in little trays now that I don't have a greenhouse or hoop house right in the apartment. 
This is kind of how I had to do it. Once they germinate and they are about an inch to two inches tall or so, I transplant them into bigger pots so they can continue to grow and develop their root system. When you do this, you're going to be able to eliminate the plants that are not strong, the weaker ones. Those are the ones, if they don't do well, I toss them, and then I'm left with the cream of the crop, right? The best, strongest plants to then be transplanted into the big garden or like we have here on the balcony, the big garden boxes. So it's just a, a process with these little seedlings, helping them along every step of the way, and you'll have a much more successful garden if you weed out the bad ones and maybe not have so many disappointments later. So for my little tiny lettuces, I'm actually gonna be putting like four or five in the same pot and they'll grow just fine. Remember, they're not gonna stay in these pots forever. This is just a bigger space for them to continue growing before we transplant them. So I've cleaned up my tomatoes the best I can. I'm gonna give everything a good drink of water. Hopefully my tomatoes will make it, we'll see. And these seedlings are happy. They've got more room, they've got sunshine and water. Hey, my lovely friends. I think that's gonna be it for today's video. Thanks for doing school with Parker and I. Thanks for doing a fashion show, trying on some clothes. And thanks for helping me transplant my plants. I had a lot of fun. Definitely have to get some more pots because I didn't have enough to finish the seedlings today, but we'll do that in the next couple days or so and hopefully they turn out all right and then we'll get them transplanted into the bigger garden boxes and before you know it, we'll have a beautiful jungle on the balcony producing lots of yummy veggies for the family through the summer. That's the hope, right? Joe's on his way home from work right now. I think we are having meatloaf tonight with mashed potatoes and gravy and some kind of veggie. Probably Brussels sprouts. I think I have Brussels sprouts in there, but we are grinding our own turkey meat that was homegrown from the Homestead property. Um, so yeah, look at that. I had store-bought cream cheese with my bagel this morning and homegrown turkey for dinner. See, it's all about the balance. <laughs>